Lori, thanks for watching my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you the many ways in Photoshop that you can add twirl or spin to an image. So often you may take an image and want to add some additional movement, or you may want to just play creatively, especially with a flower image. So what I'm going to do is first show you all the different ways with filters that you can add spin or twirl. And then I'll walk through editing two images to just show you how I would use those filters to get creative with some flower photos. So the first step is you want to duplicate your background layer. So I've already done that. You can do Command or Control J, or you can right click and do Duplicate Layer. Now, once you've created that layer, you want to hover, click on it so that you have the gray, grayed out box you want to right click and convert this to a smart object. That's really important because it's going to allow us to tweak our spin, our twirls as we go and not have to start over. I'll show you why this is so important in just a minute. All right, so the first tools that I'm gonna show you are under filter and we're gonna start right here with blur. So you can see there are several blur options um, under this menu. The one we're going to start with is Radial Blur. So when you click on Radial Blur, you're going to get this nice simple menu and you have options to do spin. You also have the quality. We're just going to stick with good today. Um, I want it to run pretty fast for you. And let's just go ahead and start at 50%. So I'm going to click OK and it's going to process. So we can see it completely gave us a really abstract image, which could be what we want. Now to adjust the amount of spin, this is where our small, smart filter comes into play. All we have to do is click on the words radial blur. It's gonna pop open our menu. And now we can change the amount. So easy without having to start completely over. So I'm gonna reduce that and now we can see what it's done. Just adding a little bit of that radial blur. I can also double click on it and I could change it to zoom. So if I wanted to add a zoom effect instead, I could come in and do that. So that's kind of fun. That's giving us a little bit more movement and detail. So I'm gonna click on it again and reduce the amount down to let's say 20%. So that's giving us some movement. Now the fun thing that we can do is it's already given us a mask when we create the smart filter. So I can make sure that my paint foreground color is on black. I can grab my brush I'm going to keep the opacity between close to 50% and I may just want to bring back a little bit of detail around some parts to just keep it a little bit more detail um, and just show that twirl as it's kind of starting to move around. All right, so I can show you before and after. Now I also did do some cleanup on this image, so you'll see that as well. <clears throat> okay, so that was using the filter and doing the radial blur. So let's go ahead and duplicate our background layer again. I'm going to turn off the radial blur filter. And now we've got our background copy. And what I want to do is convert to a smart object again. And now we're going to go to filter. And this time we're going to go to blur gallery. And so here I'm going to show you the spin blur. Now this one, I'll be honest, is not one of my favorites and it sometimes is very, very slow to process. So when you use the field iris tilt path or spin blur, you're going to get this menu. You can move this around. So I'm going to put it in the center of this image and then you can adjust the points of the circle. So um, you can make it an oval, you can kind of shape it in any direction you want. So I'm going to try to, yeah, get this to move up and bring the sides in a little bit. I really don't care if the background's included. So you can see when we're using this one, it updates as you go, which can be frustrating. Um, again, I don't find it to be the easiest tool and I run on a very fast Mac, but um, there we go. It's now Oh, see, it's making all kinds of shapes for us. <laughs> so um, this one can be a little testy, but all right, there we go. Um, I 
going to update it here. Now the blur angle is something that you can adjust. Um, so we can see this kind of made it an oval. Now if I want to adjust it, I can double click on Blur Gallery, takes it back. So you can see the angle up here. Um, I want to try to adjust this shape. And I'm going to grab these points and see if I can adjust this. And again, it's being a little bit testy. So I think for this video, I'm going to just leave it at this so that you know that this tool is here. But again, um, it, it may or may not be your favorite tool and the one that you use the most. I think, let's see if we can get this to enlarge a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and click, there we go. Oh my goodness, it's gone off the page. I'm gonna click OK if I can get it to stop. <laughs> and once we click OK, it's updating and I'll show you um, what it did. I think this, these um, blur tools right here, the Field Iris, Path, and Spin, I think need to be updated in Photoshop. I don't even know if that's something they're going to continue to support. Um, I have found them for a while to be a little, a little testy. So we can see what it did to the image, but we do have our mask. The other thing is on this, we can reduce the opacity. So I'm going to bring it down maybe about 75%, use my mask, I've got my brush, make the brush a little bigger, I'm just going to clean up the edges here where my mask kind of came over, and I'm going to pop a little bit more focus in the center part. So you can see we created a little bit of twirl, it's showing some movement, and it does look different than the radial blur. So the radial blur is a true, uh, much softer actual blur this spin is giving us the spin movement. You can see where it's giving it as if we shot it really slow. So if you're wanting to show that movement and almost blend those colors, then a spin blur is going to be more of what you're looking for. All right, so let's turn that one off. Let's go duplicate this layer again. And again, I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And now we're gonna to go to filter and we're going to go to liquify. So under Liquify, I need to make my brush smaller, we have a great tool here. It's the um, fourth option down is Spin. And this one's really fun because you can put it anywhere you want in your image. So we could bring it out large and then you just click on your mouse or trackpad and it starts spinning your subject. Now I'm gonna undo that. The other option is we could make it really small and just come in and spin this center, kind of get it started, which is definitely a creative look. Um, now, wherever you kind of position this is where it's going to spin. So you can see as I move this around, it's doing different things to my image. Now I could also come in and just spin little parts. So you can see I can make it really custom and not completely distort all of it. Um, so that is the way that um, spin works. You have some brush tools over here. You do have some, if you distort a face, you've got those options. Liquify was really created for working with um, portraits and being able to make some modifications. There's also the option to bloat or pinch, but this is a fun way to add a little bit of distortion and movement to an image creatively. Now what we can do is click OK, and again, we can use our mask, go to our brush, and we could modify. So if we wanted to bring back some of that center, um, we could. We could take this opacity all the way up, and maybe I just want to bring back the blue in the center, but keep some of the rest of the swirl. So that looks a little bit better. I do like how it gave us the blur effect and kind of distorted the lines in this pinwheel. So it gave a little bit of um, fun distortion there. But you could clean it up if you didn't want all of that around the edge. That's looking a little bit um, 
a little bit better. I think I like that. I would still clone out this tag, but I think that gives a little bit of whimsy and fun. So if we compare it to this image, this is giving us just a lot of movement, a lot of twirl. And then we had our second option where it's really giving us as if we shot it slow. And then our third option is using liquify, which is really kind of giving us a little bit more of a um, whimsical movement in these um, panels here. So it's just a whole, whole different kind of vibe and look. So that's using liquify. So those are three options that you could play with. So now let's go over to a flower image to show how we could use this to edit in a creative way. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my background layer, convert it to a smart object. And to start, I think with this one, let's try the blur and let's do a radial blur. And again, I think I'll try the um, spin on this one. And let's just see, see what it does. Oh, that's fun. So I sometimes, I like to use spin when you've got things that, um, you know, petals, it's really done a great job on this background. Now I can reduce the opacity. So that's just giving it a little bit of that blur. And again, I can come over, click B for my brush. And if I wanna bring back some details in the center, I can. And if there's parts of the image that I wanna not have as blurry, I could bring those um, back. I am still, maybe take the opacity of my brush to 50% and I can bring back some of the details. And if I wanna soften that edges just a little bit, um, I can do that. So I just love how that's created. Um, it almost looks like it was shot with a creative lens or maybe even free lensed. So that's using the radial blur. All right, so let's duplicate the background again and convert it to a smart object. And let's go to filter liquify and we'll just see what it does to add a little twirl. Um, this one may be tricky. We do have a pretty large flower here. So let's start here and see what happens. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of make the flower dance a little. And um, I'm going to click okay. Now from here, if we reduce the opacity, you're gonna see it's gonna mix the flowers together, which kind of gives us um, a real interesting look as if it's kind of blowing in the wind. So it's something you could play with. I'm gonna click B for brush and see what happens if I, let me take my opacity all the way up, if I bring back the center of the image, but keep some of that dancing part. Maybe bring back that petal. So. That's a really creative, um, you know, different look. May want to just soften that one. But I do like how it's giving us some movement as if it's kind of blowing in the wind. So there may be times where you have a field of flowers and you want to just add some whimsy. This could be, um, you know, a fun alternative that you could try using twirl. Okay, let's try this last image. And I think this is one that I would definitely usually like to use the spin. So we're gonna try it one more time. We're gonna go to Blur Gallery and try a spin blur. Let's see what happens and if we can get it to, um, to work for us. So I'm gonna bring it to the center and I am going to try to make it larger. Okay, so it's it's working well this time. I think the key is to make sure that you come down to where you get the arrows so that you can enlarge your circle. So now it's updating. All right, I'm liking that angle. That's about 15% on the angle side. So I'm gonna click OK. It's updating, we'll click OK, and it's going to bring the image in. And what we can do now is we can use our mask or our opacity slider to just reduce the blur on this layer. So we're gonna let it progress. And this can just be, again, a fun way to add some creativity to an image and give it just a, um, a look, especially some movement, is really, really fun to add to an image to give it a little bit more of a visual flow, tell a little bit more maybe of the story. 
And if you ever shoot, especially flowers on a windy day and they already have some movement, using these tools in Photoshop can give you a way to enhance that blur and make it look even more intentional. So um, these tools can come in handy from time to time. All right, so it's almost done processing. I'm glad we got to see this one work a little bit better. So we can come in now and reduce the opacity. And what this is doing is at 50%, you can just see where it looks like a little bit of movement. Now we can, um, I did not convert this to a smart object, so my mistake there, but we can add our layer, go to our brush, and I could bring back the details in the center and maybe take the opacity of my brush to 50% and just kind of alter where, how much of that blur we see, maybe just blending it just a little bit, but just adding a little bit of that softness and kind of whimsy to, um, to the image. And then I could play with the opacity, bring that up a little bit more. So just a way to show some movement. Let me increase this opacity. Blend that just a little bit. So um, just a fun way there. Another option for this image, let's do Command J, and this time let's convert to a smart object. And let's go filter blur and let's try a radial blur and this time let's do zoom with this and see what happens let's start at almost 50 percent and ooh, that's kind of very interesting and fun we can reduce the opacity a little bit so again just showing some fun movement we've got our mask so all we have to do is come over with our brush and just bring back maybe a little little detail but really fun to show some movement and um, create um, a fun overlay look or movement look with this image. Now, if you wanted more blur, you could of course come in and increase it using that smart filter. It's gonna make that so easy to do. I'm gonna take that back up to 100% so you can see. Now we've got really much more of an abstract image and something really creative and fun. And this may be something that you enjoy creating and playing with. Um, there are lots of times that an image like this could be really interesting. I love what it did to the petals over here, and I might would even crop this image and really just focus on that part of the flower to showcase um, some of the fun, fun whimsy with creating movement and some of that blur. All right, so I hope you'll have fun playing with some of these movement twirl spin features. And if you like this video, please place some comments below and subscribe for more videos. Thanks, everybody.